I am comfortable. It's beautiful, sunny weather, clear skies. The Algarve has over 300 sunny days a year, which makes it the absolute perfect place to do astrophotography, to photograph the Milky Way, starry skies. It's just almost too easy. So I wanted on today's video to do kind of like an intro guide to photographing the stars or an intro guide to photographing the Milky Way and later down the road, I'm gonna do a very advanced one. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you wanna see that, be sure to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, be sure you hit the notification bell because I've been all over the place with my uploads lately. Anyways, I'm just gonna walk you through the process because astrophotography is easier than you might think, but it takes planning. Astrophotography is all about planning. It's about getting it right before you even go out to the field. So then once you're out in the field, all you have to do is press the shutter and you make your photo. The reason that people think astrophotography is so hard is because they don't plan. So today's video is gonna be focused on the planning and then we're gonna go out in the field and take a picture. So the first step is obviously to find a dark sky area. You can do astrophotography in cities. You can sit somewhere like here and get star photos. They're just not as good. Areas that have no light pollution are the absolute best. So to do that, I use an app called Light Pollution Map, and I'm actually gonna make a blog post that links all of the different apps I'm gonna talk about on today's episode because there are a lot. And essentially, if we open Light Pollution Map, what we can do is we can just scroll around and look for dark skies. On the app, the purplish blue means dark sky. That means you've got very little light pollution. That's where you're gonna have crazy skies. But you don't need to go to the purple blue areas to do astrophotography. So we headed to Mertola to take the pictures uh, in the last vlog that you saw and I got the thorns all stuck in my leg, which is uh, now pretty much recovered as you can see. Look at those legs. Okay, I'll stop. So what we're gonna do is focus on this Mertola area. But as you can see on the map, it's like green hedging on yellow. So we probably wanna get just outside of town. Step number two is weather. You gotta find clear skies. It doesn't matter if you're in a dark sky area, if it's cloudy. The app that I tend to use the most for this is called Clear Outside. And it's a pretty basic app, but it works. It basically just tells you how clear it's gonna be outside. So if you go into the app and you scroll through the time of day, it, says, it gives you a number one to a hundred. And you can see it says zero for most of these days. That means there's gonna be no clouds in the sky. It's probably a good time to shoot. Step three is to figure out the moon and the Milky Way. The moon really impacts your astrophotography. If it's a full moon and it's up, it makes the sky too bright to get really good star photos. With the moon totally down, it means that you have absolutely no light at all lighting your scene. You have to kind of decide how you want the moon to work for your photography. Personally, if I'm somewhere like the mountains, I want like a half moon or a quarter moon at my back lighting up the scene. I definitely don't want a full moon in front of me. So to figure out the moon, I use an app called TPE. It's very basic. It just shows you the angle of the moon, when the moon is rising and, and stuff like that. So on the day I went out shooting, TPE says that the moon was up basically around midnight. So I need to do my photography before that or at least have the moon at my back as it's coming up. Okay, next step is the Milky Way as the seagulls are just going crazy on my takes. The Milky Way is important, obviously, but what I never realized before I started doing astrophotography is that the Milky Way core is only visible to us, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. I don't know if this is true in the Southern Hemisphere as well. It's only visible basically in the summer months. If you want the core of the Milky Way, the best months are like June to September. And to figure out where the Milky Way is gonna be at what time, I use PhotoPills. PhotoPills is an app for photography that can, you, that can do a lot of things, actually. So there's a part on the PhotoPills app that if you scroll down, it says Night AR. You click on that, and then you can just, even in the daytime, just hold the camera up and see where the Milky Way is currently. And then if you scroll to the right or to the left, if you wanna go back in time, you can actually figure out where the Milky Way is gonna be in the sky. So if we scroll back to the night that I went out and shot photography. Calm down, seagull. 
you can see that the Milky Way is basically, yeah, the core is right there straight south about 11 p.m. So again, that works out perfect. The moon's coming up at midnight. If we go out and shoot at 11 p.m., we should have a really good situation, which we did, which you'll see. Now the next step is what I call pre-scouting. So I do all my pre-scouting on the computer, uh, basically on Google Maps almost entirely. So let's open up Google Maps. And obviously since I'm filming this afterwards, I can kind of explain what happened and how I found this location. My original plan was actually to try to find an ang angle that I could photograph the town of Mertola. So I went on to Google Maps and I always, always, always use the satellite version. And basically I looked for angles that I'd be able to shoot the town south. And I found one angle that I thought would work. Once I got to the actual location, I realized that town was just way too bright to photograph with the, star above, the stars above. Part of it is just because the castle was there and they were really lighting up the castle. So I didn't end up getting the photo I planned on, but just north of town, I found this incredible um, old windmill. And since I can photograph it straight south, it should have the Milky Way coming straight down. Okay, let's talk about the camera gear really quick. There's good news and bad news. The good news is you can kind of do astrophotography on almost any camera in the world, including a lot of phones. The only thing you really need is the ability to do like a 20 second exposure. Now the bad news is, from a financial perspective, is the better camera gear you have for astrophotography, the better quality images come out. You're best off with a full frame sensor with a low pixel count. That way you get really clean, no noise images, even at high ISO. And you're also best off with a really fast lens. And as you might know, the faster lenses are more expensive. I think you can do astro at an F4 lens, but ideally you're best off F2.8 or even F1.8. The only things you need for astrophotography are the camera, the lens, and a really sturdy tripod. What I took out to the field on this episode was uh, my Canon R and a 15 to 35, which is an f2.8 lens. With your gear in your hand, there's still another step you need to do before you go out and take pictures. What I do before I even go out and shoot photos if I'm doing an astro only session is right away in camera at home, I set my camera up to go ISO 3200, f2.8 or f4, and 30 seconds. That way when I'm out in the field, I don't have to do any messing around. And then the final thing is figuring out focus. Because focus can be extremely frustrating doing astrophotography. And essentially you're gonna find yourself in three different categories when it comes to focus, depending on what kind of camera you use. So if you use a traditional DSLR, there's a good chance your lens is going to have a focus wheel on it that looks like this and it says the distance of which the lens is focusing so you switch your lens to manual focus and you just spin the wheel until the line lines up with infinity on Canon cameras it's not the infinity sign it's the little line and then it'll photograph to infinity that's generally gonna be the stars the only issue you might have is if you have a subject too close to you in the foreground but that's definitely an advanced technique anyway. So focus to infinity. Not all lenses are the exact same. Some lenses focus a little beyond the infinity mark, some a little bit before. One of the things you can do to, to check on that before going out, you put the lens on your camera before you even leave home and just focus on something way out in the distance like the houses beyond over here and just see where the lines line up. That'll be your infinity mark. Uh, the second, focusing uh, situation you might end up in is if you're on a mirrorless camera. They generally don't have a, a distance wheel on here so you don't know what infinity is. On mirrorless cameras instead you get the wheel in the back of the camera. You just spin this wheel essentially until the little yellow marker is directly under the infinity sign. And again that's something you want to check before going out to make sure it's right. Turn the autofocus on, focus on something in the distance, and then switch it back to manual focus and have a look at it. And yeah, it's right on the infinity mark. If your lens is older or cheaper and you're on an older DSLR, you might not have a focus wheel in here and you might not have one on the camera. 
that's a tricky situation and the best way to deal with it and this is what i used to do in my early days of photography in the middle of the day before going out to do astro take a, a focus on autofocus of the distance switch my lens back to manual focus and then i would grab a piece of tape and tape up the manual focus wheel so that it can't move and then it would be set to uh to the to infinity so that's kind of what you do at home and I know a lot of you are like, we just want to take pictures, bro. And I know, so do I. So now we're going to go out in the field to Mertola, take the picture, and we're going to come back and I'll show you how to edit it. Okay, so I'm on location at the lighthouse, which I just realized as I pan to it is in the dark. And it's not a lighthouse either, it's a windmill. And the prep work was perfect. I'm gonna show you the photo pills right now. Remember, we scouted out this spot on the computer and we're there. And just as su suspected, just as expected, the Milky Way is right on top of our windmill. So the Milky Way goes right behind this windmill, which is awesome. Now that we've done all the prep work and set everything up, we can just take the photo. And honestly, that's probably the easiest part. When I go out to do Astro, I kind of just guess at first. I set up what I think is the right composition, but I kind of just guess it. Then I go to ISO 3200. I set the shutter speed to 30 seconds. And then I set the aperture as low as I can go. So in this case, F 2.8. And then I take a picture. And then 30 seconds later when the picture is done, I can tell how far off it is and what adjustments I need to make. Your camera can see in the dark even if you can't. So use your camera to your advantage and move it around and shift it around. Uh, I have done that and I'm going to show you the photo straight out of the camera right now. And I think it looks pretty good, even straight out of the camera. We're going to uh, go back to the lab and do the editing, but I want to take a couple more here. Okay, I'm in Simba, the Land Rover, and I just want to mention two things before we head back to edit these photos. The first thing is, the thing that I really love about astrophotography is usually there's no deadline. You know, unlike sunrise or sunset where you have 15 minutes maybe of really nice light, you can shoot astro all night with the exception of when there's a moon coming up. So right now there's a full moon about to pop up. So I had to call it a night. And uh, the second thing I wanna mention is never trust your LCD screen when you're doing astrophotography. It's always gonna make you think that the image is actually brighter than it is. The LCD screens are bright. So so often you'll go out in the field and go, yeah, that's properly exposed. And then you'll get home and you'll go, oh, that's way too dark. Okay, now for the fun part, which is the editing. I do all my editing in Lightroom. Some people use Photoshop. Let me shift you over to my computer and kind of walk you through what's going on. This is the photo straight out of the camera. There's no camera tricks, there's no editing tricks. This is straight out of the camera. And when I mentioned in the field that you need to shoot brighter than you actually think you do. And I was talking about the histogram. This histogram is pretty, pretty dead on for astrophotography. There's nothing clipped and it's, it fills up a lot of this histogram. What happens out in the field is because the LCD is so bright, you end up with an image like this. It's two stops underexposed. And in the field, this looks okay. So I'm not a crazy good editor. Like full disclosure, I think most of you know that. So I'm gonna kind of just walk you through really quickly what I did with this photo. I also wanna point something else out before I do that. I shot ISO 3200 15 millimeters at f2.8 for 30 seconds. A lot of astrophotographers try to limit their exposure to 15 seconds so they don't get motion in the stars. It in fact is not the stars moving, it's the earth turning. But what happens if we zoom in on this is you, it's not a really great example because they're not moving that much, but you can see the stars just, they're not round, they're like oval shaped. If you went longer or with a more telephoto lens, you'd get lines. I personally don't care if they're lines instead of dots because I think that by having slightly bigger lines, you have 
more visible stars. And that, that's just personal preference thing. So for me, that's not important. That's why I didn't mention it, but I will mention it on the advanced video. So let's get to this, uh, this photo editing. Basically, let's clear everything up right away. So we'll start at the top with the crop. It is a little bit off. I think that probably works. Yeah, that's much better. And then I do this thing personally where I always boost the vibrance right away. And I think it just helps me edit an image when I see how bright and colorful it is. The other thing is there's kind of two edits to an astro photo photo. So we're going kind of on the first pass. The first pass is just to get everything clean in the image. So we're going to bring the highlights down to bring some of that down and some of the highlights on the building down. We're going to bring the shadows up just a bit. We're going to bring the whites up just a bit. And again, we're not focusing on the stars. We're more focusing on this. And we're going to bring the blacks down. This is also way too yellow for me, so we're going to make the white balance down a little bit. Yeah, like that works. Um, and then you have a choice whether you want the image to look super sharp, like that, or whether you want it to look really dreamy, like that. I'm a dreamy, like I definitely prefer everything dreamy. So I'm going to go like that, but I'm also going to bring the texture up a little bit to keep it sharp looking. And then I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. And then that's basically it. That's the first pass. The second pass is about the sky. So I'm going to go up here and use a gradient filter. And I'm just going to put a gradient across the stars more or less like that. The changes that I'm going to make are basically only going to affect the top part of the image. So whatever's red when you click on this, it's going to be affected. So I'm actually going to bring the exposure down a bit, maybe like that. I'm going to bring the whites way up because that'll help bring out the stars. You see the difference? Clarity, it, like I said, I went down on the building. With Astro, you're bringing it way up and it really makes the stars look bright. The highlights, bring them up as well. And then the contrast, you bring up as well. And it just helps bring out the contrast between the whites, stars, and the blacks, skies. And then you can even bring the blacks down a little bit more there. And then that's about it. I want to make some local adjustments. I'm actually going to bring the dehaze up a touch. And see this spot? This is coming from town. So I'm going to do another brush, which another gradient filter. And I'm just going to go like this across this area to bring down that light. So I'm going to bring the exposure down. Got to kind of match the color because that was yellow. So it looks brown. So we want to blue that up a bit and then maybe increase the contrast to help define it a bit more as well. And yeah, now it looks totally even and not out of place. Now, something I don't do at all to my Milky Way photography is edit the actual Milky Way, but there is a trick that a lot of photographers use to bring out the Milky Way a little bit more, and that's they click this adjustment brush here. You can see that. They make it feather a little bit more than I have and then they increase the contrast, the clarity, the highlights, and the blacks. And then they basically just run right through the middle of the Milky Way, and then right along it. And then you can um, bring it up a little bit more, you can bring out the whites a little bit more, and in theory that really helps define the Milky Way. We'll hit done. And so now if we hit C to compare before and after, you can see the difference. This is totally unedited here, and this is with our edits over to the left. The editing makes a massive difference in astrophotography, but you don't have to go crazy with it. It's mostly just adding contrast, clarity, and bringing out the highlights and whites in the stars. Astrophotography, in my opinion, is extremely easy if you plan it, if you execute it, and then if you, uh, you edit it. It's one of the easiest forms of photography. But then you can take it to a whole other level and make it super complicated. And we're going to get to that on the next episode, probably in a couple weeks time. And I think that's going to be fun. I've got some fun things planned for that video and we'll do that video almost vlog style out in the field. So uh, stay tuned for that video, stay subscribed, and I hope you like the photo. Peace.